Hello everyone, and welcome back to a Kerbal Space Program video, Colonizing the Solar System. Now for those of you who are new to this series, it's about a 5 or 6 video series so far. Basically, Kerbin has been destroyed by a comet, and even though there was many different survivors, one of the survivors that we play is a small little colony ship, and we decided to go to Duna to try to build a new colony. Now, that sounds easy enough, but unfortunately, the Kraken attacks almost every single episode in some some form or fashion. And in reality, if this was an actual thing going on, there'd be a lot of problems that would arise and the colonists would have to find creative ways to solve those problems because you can't really think of everything right off the bat you're going to run into some things that you didn't really know existed until you run into them now right here you're seeing me put together the lifter and the mover vehicles in order to try to get enough weight so i can push the colony around because it was pointing the wrong way but that gave me an idea to find a way to combine both the lifter capabilities and the mover capabilities uh, into one solid rover kind of like a forklift slash front end loader so it took a little while but eventually i was able to get something working some sort of design that would get up underneath pick the whole thing up lock it and then be able to pull it and funny enough during the design phase it started looking more and more like a spider so i just kind of went with it So eventually this new lifter slash uh, mover vehicle that was kind of like the spider class, it had a few things that I wasn't too happy about, like the bouncy front end forklift arms that it had, but 90% of the time it could do the job well. So right here I'm just making sure that it's fully fueled and it's got enough weight so that it can actually pull stuff. And of course I got rid of the old lifter there. Now I designed a new vehicle called the Refueler and it it works so it works so well that uh, I might end up having to redesign the mover because of the fact that the Refueler um, other than it's really really buggy springs from its wheels which you'll see later had these little arm had this little arm that came out and it could tow stuff and, and pull stuff as well as refuel stuff now still having a big problem with the cubic technical strut the little ones that i was using to um separate the craft every time it was spawned into the world which by the way the person who made simple construction said they fixed it i have not yet downloaded the newer version though so what happens is it kind of attaches itself to the to the node that's in the back of the docking port which can cause havoc when you release it so what i do is i put a cubic octagonal strut there to kind of push the craft away but what ends up happening is that the cubic octagonal strut is left over which can also cause havoc but not as much so it's a lot safer I end up designing something to get rid of the whole Kraken problem later. And inter interestingly enough, I can't even pick them up using the engineer's uh, building ability. Uh, it won't let me pick them up at all. It'll highlight them green, but it won't let me pick them up. So I have to get rid of them either by making them explode, pushing them aside, or going into the map and deleting them. I eventually find a way, a system around this. Uh, it's going to slowly phase it all out, but it's a, it's a lot more sure way of getting everything done without any explosions. As you can see here, the spider mover is uh, really well. It works very nicely. I had a lot of control with putting things together, which made the job a lot easier. Oh, and also the fact that I have a brand new CPU and motherboard, thanks to a lot of people who you know who you are and, oh, crap yeah the little fueler this is the spring things i was talking about it, it lost it it it's, it's lost its marbles it's lost its mind but with the new cpu everything was running a lot smoother a lot smoother so it made doing this kind of job actually a lot faster it took six hours six hours to get all this footage huh but i can only imagine what would have happened had i had the older pc probably would have taken uh, six more hours so definitely speed things up and oh my gosh um right here the cubic octagonal strut actually 
destroys the entire colony in one fatal swoop. Check that out. This is how buggy those things are. This is one of the reasons why I uh, had to invent a brand new system to keep that from happening. But other than the bugs, things were looking pretty good. We had the factory up and running and uh, we would eventually get... Uh, oh, this is interesting. If it's too heavy, I had it so you could put wheels on the back. And the factory was the only one that was super heavy, so heavy that uh, the little spider thing was having all oh, you stupid refueler with the I end up fixing this I do find a way to fix this but man this thing creates some serious some serious cracking issues look how nicely they just kind of fit right in place I was very proud of that little spider mover although I ended up redesigning it later because of well you'll see however this would be a huge milestone for the colonists because no longer did I have to worry about only building from the colony camp but now the first building ever made from the actual new colony was its mining facility so it was it was a mining facility it was a it was a structure that was built from the new colony now the colony was far from being anywhere near completed it still needed a smelter and as well as more power because the power draw from those mining facilities as well as the part making stuff was overwhelming and yes the side exploded when i tried to uh, i think it was a uh, uh, release the cubic octagonal strut so you know i was like you know what screw it i'm just gonna go ahead and implement my idea now and try to repair the factory because i didn't feel like taking the factory off and tossing it it had to be repaired now sadly the part that I had made I had forgotten to put some sort of decoupling device on it so I had to have a couple engineers go out and literally dismantle the old factory in order for it to be released and even then the part itself was not salvageable I could pull a few things from it but it, it just wasn't worth it it was easier just to build a new one with decoupling capability now you'll see that the new decoupling device was no longer a cubic octagonal strut but would actually be a small little probe core. That way I could select it and uh, turn it into uh, debris and it would just disappear on its own while it fell harmlessly to the bottom. This new design gets rid of the whole Kraken issue of releasing stuff. So it's going to be really, really nice. Now I didn't record it, but one of the vehicles had, had flipped over again and the antenna had broken all over the place. But unfortunately, there was really no way for me to clean it. And so what ended up happening was that it created a domino effect of glitchy uh, gears, um, like uh, glitchy suspension systems that made everything just bounce all over the place. And I just barely, through quick thinking, got the work truck out of the way before it got smashed by the giant mover vehicle. Whoa, what a mess. The mover vehicle, I wasn't even going to try to it. I wasn't even going to try to attempt to flip it over, so it was garbage. And plus, I had already uh, built the spider-like uh, rover to replace it anyway. So that was fun. So, like I said before, the new power draw that this new factory was pulling was a heck of a lot more than what the new colony power plant could give. So I had to build another solar power plant put next to it. And while that didn't completely make it 100% uh, could run all day, it did make it uh, last a lot longer. So eventually, in order to make this thing run completely 100% all day long, we're going to be looking at maybe a one or two more more a total grand maybe a grand total of four of these solar power plants plus maybe like a, a battery storage unit for overnight or something of that nature it's, it's going to be complex definitely uh, i have to figure something out now even though the refueler flew into the air and crashed and busted up its little engine and communications dish i i really wanted to try try and save it so i made some parts and i went out and fixed it and tried to readjust the spring settings for the wheels and hopefully Hopefully that would work, but it ran well for the most part. Using the new factory, I went ahead and built a brand new habitat for the Kerbals so they can all have their own little room in somewhat of a luxurious space. But the habitat was designed before the spider mover was created, so the spider mover had problems locking onto it, so I just kind of had to try to MacGyver it in. But unfortunately, when the habitat locked in, it jumped 
from one angle to another, glitching through the spider's arms and l and literally trapping the spider underneath of the of the habitat. I didn't know how much longer I had before the kraken would explode, and I didn't want the colony to be completely destroyed. So I kind of rushed over there with my engineers. Ended up flipping the truck over, but I didn't care about the truck. I just wanted the engineers get out of there and release this thing. And no matter what I did, even though I calmed the shaking down, no matter what I did. It didn't quite release it, and the the whole thing was stuck in there. And I didn't feel like completely taking the whole thing apart, you know, putting all the engineers together or whatever. That wasn't that wasn't going to happen with this with with the allowed amount of time that I have. Interestingly enough, though, I found out that this thing is so strong it could pick up the entire colony and move it. So I figured, well, why not just go ahead and use use this to my advantage and move the entire colony away from the edge of the cliff and closer to closer to flat flatter ground ultimately ended up i ended up cutting off the habitat and the spider mover completely and labeling them as junk and recycling them I went ahead and built a new spider rover. This time I got rid of the arms completely and just ended up having it so it had a docking port and I just lift it up via the docking port. It's something I should have done a long time ago. Yes, yes, I know. But I, I got I got tired of the whole cracking problem with the forklift-like design. Unfortunately though, <laughs> I ran into another problem with the spider thing. It's, it's so heavy that in the back I put like landing gears to try to keep it try to keep it uh, from popping the tires but uh, I must have um, saved it wrong or something because then those landing gears start acting bad and jumping all over the place I tried to kind of give it a quick fix but that didn't work so inevitably I'm gonna have to go back and figure that out later and redesign it but finally it was up to the last piece um, now the last piece being of course i wanted to put another agricultural dome on here to feed the kerbals there are 36 kerbals in this one colony so i'm figuring that each of these uh each of these agricultural domes can feed like maybe 20 people so having two of them equals 40 you know that kind of thing um i'm trying to keep it realistic we're not we're not we're not pretending that they have freaking star trek like replica here so you're going to need food to be able to grow year-round and you're going to need at least at least a small variety you know whether it be potatoes corn you know, cabbage whatever carrots so the new colony is now self-sufficient it can build new modules it, it has uh, life support up and operational food power place to live and of course that includes air and water so while it doesn't have all the bells and whistles such as a research and medical and our good stuff or long platform and all that other cool stuff it is it has reached self-sustainability it does not need help from the colony camp anymore So the last thing for this video is that I went ahead and found the vehicles that I want to keep. I think I'll keep that little Explorer over because it's just because it's so darn cute, even though if it has a little bit of Kraken in it. But there it is. New New Horizons Colony. No longer the New Horizon Colony camp, but the actual colony. What this means is that I'm going to go ahead and label the camp as debris and it will all be deleted by the game in the next video. Of course, we can say that it was torn down and spare parts were used and all that good stuff, but it ultimately served its purpose. It got the Kerbals there and it got the colony up and running. It's kind of amazing if you think about it, if you like really sit down and think about it, that those pieces, that, that those pieces of the colony camp are, are spacecraft pieces. That this, It's the colony ship. It's literally the colony ship on the ground. And pieces of the colony ship and failed satellites and stuff are still in orbit. Kerbin is a destroyed mess. And there's other colonies out there that may or may not have made it. Which I think I'll just use like a paradise 
if uh, to see if e- in each like episode if whether or not I run into something of that nature it'll be seldom and rare but when it happens it'll be kind of fun but there it is new colony new horizons I think right new horizons yeah all right everyone that is it for the day thank you so much for watching this Kerbal Space Program video of colonizing the solar system if you liked what you saw please leave a like and if you really liked what you saw consider subscribing every like and every share helps greatly especially with the YouTube algorithm being the way it is. I am Veos, love you all, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.